video tutorial on histograms part 3. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. Alright, so you've watched parts 1 and 2, and this section we're going to worry about overlaying histograms on top of each other because often people want to see distributions simultaneously of different quantities. For example, we're going to read in a testing data set, and there's test 1, test 2, and test 3, and we want to see if the distributions are the same. Uh, across grade levels. So the first thing we're going to do is you should go to the repository listed below on the bit.ly link and download the testing one CSV and I've got put it on the desktop and we're going to run this and you can see from the header that we have grade 5, grade 7, and grade 10. It's basically the same test given at each grade and it's divided out in some weird way. It's like 71 questions or something. That's why all the, the uh, decimals go far out. All right, so um, the first thing we want to do is create a histogram of each one of these and see what they look like. So we know how to do this. So we can do score one, grade five, and we can run this. So let's put some comments here. Create histograms. So I'm going to create the first one for grade five here and run it and I can zoom into it and you can see most of the students did not do that well on this particular test. Uh, the scores are low uh, when adjusted. Okay, so let's look at it again for when they are in grade 7. And when I run this one, I can see that it's more of a symmetric shape in the sense that everybody's kind of doing in the in the middle and if it's the same test or the same type of test we would expect people to get better as they go along so in grade 10 let's see how they did and you can see that this is much higher but what would be nice to be able to do is lay them on top of each other and that's what we're going to try to do here is present all of them together where we can deal with it so uh, let's try to do this and what we're gonna have to do is play around with the order that's that's the tricky thing so let's first overlay the histograms I'm gonna start with five and just do it in this order it's pretty easy we'll, we'll doctor it up to get the labels right and everything but really all I have to do is type on here add equals true and then add equals true and if I run this together it will take the first histogram and then overlay the next two on top of it so let's give this a go and you can zoom in and you can see that this doesn't really look that good uh, why doesn't it look good because it started off with the base histogram of five which doesn't go all the way out to one so we kind of cut off the end here so we have to doctor this up to make it look better. So, But the, the order seems to be okay at this point. So let's take our initial one, and we're going to change the x limits. So the x limits are the limits that the x-axis goes to. So we're going to go from 0 to 1 here. And this is the first thing we're going to do, and we're going to do things one at a time and keep looking at the picture until we uh, get what we like. All right, so now it goes from 0 to 1, contains all the data. I can't tell what's what in the middle here. Right, I've got all of these things that kind of look like stack bar charts. So what I want, next thing I want to do is maybe add some color so I can tell these things apart. So maybe the first thing I'll do is uh, for this one, I'm going to make the color. How about blue? Uh, and if I make that one blue, and then I can make the color on the next one, let's say red, and on the next one we'll do doesn't look very good on these plots from R but if I run this notice what I get I get the grade 5 in the back in blue I get the middle one in red and I get the other one in the the green color so I can see all of them and they're kind of stacked in front of each other so that I can tell what's going on however notice that when I do add these on top of this each other I lose what happens over here because they're laying right on top of each other. 
and I also lose what's happening in, out here. I, this could come down up and up here and then go back up. I don't know. So just keep in mind when you're presenting this, uh, it's good to know that the, what the underlying picture you're trying to create is. And if they don't overlay each other too much, this actually will look quite good. But it's, it's a concern that you need to have. So let's finish this up by doctoring the rest of the way. We're going to change the X label to here. We're going to do, uh, let's see, the score. And for the title, we want to do main equals score across grades. Okay. And when I run this, I get a picture that hopefully is something usable. So score across grades. Uh, it doesn't. It isn't perfect in the sense that you can see all of the distributions, but if the distributions don't really overlap each other, this looks really good on lots of pictures uh, because you can clearly just see how they differ from each other. So uh, this is our first attempt at this, and it looks pretty good. So now we can move to the next video where we'll talk, talk about how to interpret histograms, which is the most important thing. If you can't make a picture, or if you can make a picture, but you don't know what the picture says, then there's no point in making the picture. All right, so move on to the next video.